Hello everyone, Lily here, and welcome back to another Honkai Star Rail video. Sparkle has arrived, and if you're wondering whether you should pull for her or not, my answer is yes, you should. She holds great value at the moment and is likely to continue increasing in the future. She's a quantum support following the Harmony path, capable of recovering skill points and increasing the party skill point limit. Additionally, she can also advance the action of one ally forward, increase their crit damage, and provide a party-wide damage buff. At first glance, Sparkle's kit looks like a mix of Bronya and Hanya. Her skill is a single target buff, increasing one ally's crit damage for one turn and advances their action forward by 50%. Although the advance forward isn't as extensive as Bronya's, the mechanic is essentially the same. It even has the exact same restriction as Bronya's skill, so expect a similar fine-tuning used on her. We'll get to that later. Moving to her ultimate, we see an advanced version of Hanya's ability. Sparkle recovers four skill points and grants all allies with Cypher, an effect that will enhance her talent effect. With an ultimate costing 110 energy, assuming she always uses her skill and wears an energy recharge rope, she'll have her meter maxed by the second turn and enable another ultimate by the fifth turn. That's a total of eight skill points recovered in five turns or 1.6 skill points every turn. But wait, there is more. She also generates three more skill points if you initiate the battle while her technique is active. So now we're looking at a whooping 11 skill points in five turns, doubling what Hanya can do. Honestly, when I simulated her team skill point management, it's hard to imagine you would encounter a skill point crisis, except maybe in a poorly optimized Imbibeater Lunai team. But with any other team, running out of skill points in Sparkle's presence is improbable. Next, let's take a look at her talent and see the effect that her ultimate enhances. When Sparkle is on the battlefield, increases the max number of skill point by two. Normally, the SP cap is five, right? With Sparkle, it becomes seven. Now combine it with her technique from earlier, when using Sparkle, you will start the battle with six skill points instead of three. That's a lot of SP for your opening. However, the one that is enhanced by her ultimate is the other effect. Every time an ally consumes a skill point, all allies' damage increases by 6% at level 10. Stack up to three times for two turns. When using the ultimate, each stack of this damage buff increases by 10%, making it a potent enhancement. This proves that even though her skill is single target, Sparkle can be used in a dual DPS composition as well. However, her full potential will only be manifested when she's in a mono-quantum team. One of her traces exclusively increases the attack of quantum allies, depending on the number of quantum characters in the team. Thus, if you've been running a mono-quantum team since Fushuan's release, acquiring Sparkle will add more depth to your team. The next trace extends the duration of the crit damage buff from her skill until the start of the target's next turn. This is also such an amazing effect, because unlike Bronya's skill that will run out once the target character finishes their turn, characters with follow-up attacks will still be able to enjoy Sparkle's crit damage buff. Regrettably, while the first two traits offer substantial utility, the final one seems rather odd and even nonsensical to me. When using basic attack, Sparkle will regenerate 10 extra energy. I mean, why? If you look at her skill effect and the ability to recover two skill points every turn, there is no reason for Sparkle to ever use basic attack. Her skill is too good to pass and the team is literally swimming in skill point. So why this trace exists? But apart from this weird trace, Sparkle is an amazing all-rounder support that's fighting for a spot against other great supports, such as Bronya and Ruin Mei. Next, let's talk about her build. Building Sparkle is straightforward. You just need to remember these two goals, 200% crit damage and over 160 speed. If you remember what her skill does, Sparkle increases one ally's crit damage by 24% of her own crit damage plus 45%. So let's say she has 100% crit damage. Her crit damage buff value would be 69%. The 200% threshold is chosen because, on paper, it is the limit of what a normal person with average luck can attain. I'll explain later. And why the emphasis on exceeding 160 speed? Characters with speeds above 160 can act four times within the initial two cycles. This speed value is popular for Bronya, 
due to her ability to advance an ally's action by 100%, enabling the main DPS to attack more frequently. Given the similarities, Sparkle can leverage this tactic as well. So, taking into account the required stats above, my top recommendations for her gears are the Messenger Set and Broken Keel Ornament. Achieving a speed value above 160 demands many, many substat rolls. With her base speed at 101 and speed boots offering only 25 speed, she'll need at least 35 speed from substats, translating to 16 average speed rolls, though possibly reduced to 14 or 13 with some high rolls. On the other hand, to reach 200% crit damage, even with a crit damage body piece, she still requires 62% crit damage from substats, equivalent to 11 average rolls. This requirement essentially pushes you to spend all the possible 24 substat rolls on these two stats only, which, like I said before, is the limit of what a normal person with average luck can attain. Meanwhile, using the messenger set, due to its two-piece effect, the speed requirement will be reduced from a minimum of 161 to 155. The same goes for Broken Keel. If you do the math, Sparkle's crit damage buff is actually pretty small. Only 12% crit damage buff for every 50% crit damage she possesses. Broken Keel offers a party-wide 10% crit damage buff, which equals 42% crit damage on her possession, reducing the required crit damage from substat to 23% only. This gear combination saves you seven substat rolls, significantly easing the farming process. If Broken Keel isn't your preference, other recommended ornaments are Penacony set for Mono Quantum Teams and Fleet of Ageless. As for the main stat on each piece, ideally, you should aim for a crit damage body piece, speed boots, defensive orbs, and energy recharge rope. Top priority for substat is speed, followed by crit damage, and then defensive stats. If you opt for Broken Keel, Keep in mind that you still need 10% effect resistance from substat in order to activate its effect. Moving on to Light Cone. The best in slot choice for buffing purposes is without a doubt her signature Light Cone. It provides 32% crit damage for the wearer and distributing a 10% crit rate and 28% crit damage to allies. The signature Light Cone compensates for her single target skill buff, enhancing her effectiveness in a dual DPS composition. Alternative options for the same purpose include Past and Future and Planetary Rendezvous. Unlike other Harmony characters that often welcome meshing cogs, Sparkle doesn't require it due to her low energy requirement and lack of necessity for basic attacks. However, if you're not inclined towards the idea of giving your allies more offensive buffs through light cones, there is another option you might need to consider. Dance, dance, dance. It is an action value manipulation light cone commonly used by Ting Yun and Bronya for their respective techs. Given Sparkle's resemblance to Bronya, she can employ this light cone similarly. If you ask me personally though, I'll give up on getting her signature light cone and get Sparkle's first Eidolon or save my jades for the next banner instead. Her first Eidolon extends the Cypher's duration by one turn and increases allies with Cypher's attack by 40%. To me, this is better than what her signature light cone provides. While one of Sparkle's traces is tailored for mono quantum teams, she boasts remarkable versatility. Her exceptional skill point generation capability is the ultimate solution for teams struggling with SP management, such as Imbibitor Looney or Ching Chui team comps. Previously, it was challenging to incorporate two Harmony characters into Imbibitor team due to skill point constraints. However, now you can seamlessly integrate two skill point heavy harmony characters with Sparkle being one of them, like Sparkle with Yukong or Sparkle with Bronya to buff Imbibitor Looney. Follow-up characters can also benefit from her buff since her skill duration lasts until the start of the target character's next turn. Characters like Jingyuan, Kritka, or others reliant on follow-up attacks will greatly appreciate her service. Even hybrid break teams find her inclusion advantageous to some extent. There are just so many team compositions where Sparkle can excel, listing them all would be exhausting. Regarding her future value, I believe Sparkle is more future-proof than Bronya, primarily due to her skill point recovery ability. I don't know what kind of gimmick Hoyoverse may introduce with future characters, but one certainty remains. Skill points are the most crucial resource in battle. So if one day Hoyoverse were to unveil a character with a high skill point consumption mechanic, Sparkle would already offer a viable solution. 
Now, for the million dollar question to conclude this video, is Sparkle a must-pull? Without a doubt, yes, she absolutely is.